Last year on Black Friday, we bought the Breville Barista Express, so I've had a full year to create a well-rounded opinion on this product. In this video, I'm going to tell you everything I think you need to know to make an informed decision on whether or not this $700 machine is for you or not. Because you might find out in this video that you don't need to drop 700 bucks. Or maybe you were like us and you do. Before we bought this espresso machine, we were making latte-like drinks with a $200 machine and for almost free. And just because these methods eventually didn't end up working for our lifestyle, that doesn't mean that they won't work for you. When I first met my husband, he had an upgraded Keurig machine. Not only was it just pop the pot in and call it a day, but it had a milk frothing component and an option to pour a shot. We used this $200 machine for a couple years. Eventually though, I got to the point where I wasn't really liking the machine. And I tried everything I could do to customize the experience. They had the reusable cup so I could choose my own coffee beans. Again, it had the shot feature so I would pull shots, but to be honest, they were kind of weak. So we tossed it out the window and went to method number two, and this one was significantly cheaper. If you know anything about at-home cold brew, it is incredibly easy to make. It can last up to seven days in the fridge and you can tailor it exactly to how you want it to taste. And on top of that, when you make cold brew, it starts out as a concentrate that you then add a lot of water to to have the cold brew you know and love. Well, what I started doing is I would treat that concentrate as espresso because it's highly caffeinated. This method, aside from buying like the milk and the beans, is almost completely free. You just need something to put it all in, like a mason jar. And then I use cheesecloth to strain out the grounds. Were they official lattes? No. But did they taste good? Yes. The only reason I stopped doing this method is because it didn't really work for us in the winter time. Cold brew, hot lattes, they just, they don't really happen. So at that point we decided we needed to get an espresso machine. When you search espresso machines on Amazon, you come with a variety of options and we just started reading reviews. Something I knew we wanted from the start would be an espresso machine with a grinder included. That's in the Breville Barista Express. Partially because if you buy them separately, sometimes it can cost more than just buying an all-in-one product. And I honestly didn't want a ton of things filling up all of our counter space. Another thing that I knew that I wanted was a pressure gauge. Not all espresso machines have these, and if you're gonna calibrate your machine to get shots that you want, having the information on a pressure gauge can really help you figure out, oh, I need to do this or that. We also wanted something that would last, and it's been a year and our machine is still going strong. After reading reviews and finding a machine that had all the components we were looking for, for, we ended up buying the Breville Barista Express on sale. If you get nothing from this video other than that you need to buy it on a sale, do that because it'll take $100 or $200 off of this product just because you bought it on Black Friday and then I think there's like one or two other times a year I've seen it drop on Amazon. And in today's economy, one or 200 bucks? We could use that for groceries. If you've never calibrated an espresso machine before, it's a little bit of a learning curve, but we live in the age of YouTube and there are so many videos out there that tell you exactly how to troubleshoot it. On top of that, as somebody who hates reading user manuals that come with things because the font is always so small and it's written in a way that's so hard to understand, I reference this all the time. Whoever made this thing wrote it in a way that is incredibly easy to understand and they've included pictures. Every time without fail, if I need to clean or descale our espresso machine, I'm pulling this puppy out and just reading it. Never in my wildest dreams did I think I would actually pull out and read a user manual. Before moving on, on the note of cleaning and descaling this machine, I think it comes with one or two filters, some cleaning pods, a descaling solution, but eventually you're gonna run out and have to buy replacements online. So cheap. Because of how cheap that stuff is and how easy this user booklet is, cleaning this machine is probably one of the easiest things you'll ever have to do. Another thing that I like about this machine is it's a pretty simple infrastructure on how to use it. You don't have to necessarily have coffee experience to understand this machine. I used to work at a coffee shop, but I worked at Starbucks where all we had to do was push a button to pull the shop. There was no grinding, tamping, and pulling. So even though I have coffee experience, I'm on the same playing field learning this thing as everybody else. Another thing I like about this espresso machine is if you choose to use the grinder, is if you choose to use the grinder, there are little baskets that work for freshly ground coffee. But let's say you have a favorite roast that you love that comes pre-espresso ground. I try to buy all of my coffee whole bean, but you cannot buy whole bean white coffee. What I've read online, if you try to grind your own white coffee, it will clog up your grinder. So when they sell it, they sell it already pre-ground. So when I want to use white coffee in our nice espresso machine, they have different baskets that you can use, which is really nice because then you're not limited on the types of coffee you can have in there if for some reason they do come pre-ground. Now this machine isn't perfect and we definitely run into some troubles. I don't know what the term is for the types of mineral that we have in our water, but it will build up in our machine and we definitely have to stay on cleaning it or else I've noticed the shots will pour weird. Either they'll taste burn or they won't really pour, they'll just kind of like drip slowly. This is because the pressure inside the machine is getting all kinds of wonky. So like take care of it and it's pretty cheap to take care of it and it's pretty quick to take care of it. You just gotta take care of it. Sometimes I procrastinate. Don't do that. Now a con to this machine is it makes noise. Turning it on makes noise, steaming makes noise, pulling the shot makes noise, grinding your grounds makes noise. It's all loud. If you get up the same time as your spouse, 
not a problem. If the coffee machine is downstairs and the people sleeping are upstairs, probably not a problem. We live in an RV. Everything is very close quartered and we have a seven week old baby. If she's sleeping in her bassinet where she's definitely a lighter sleeper, she will 100% wake up. So take that as you will if you have little kids or a baby like us. But I will say, I don't think there's any espresso machine out there that's completely silent. I just don't think that's a thing. Another kind of a bummer thing is during the calibration process, you're gonna grind a lot of coffee and pour a lot of shots that aren't good. Don't buy a cheap bag to calibrate it and then use expensive stuff to pour your shots because it's gonna be all out of whack. Because the machine is like, excuse me, you used these beans to get the right settings. Now you're trying to put these settings on a completely different kind of bean. It just doesn't work like that. So you will waste some coffee. But it's for a good cause because then all your shots after that are gonna be splendiful. Something else worth mentioning is you cannot pour a shot and steam milk at the same time. You have to do one or the other. I mean, if you are in a huge rush in the morning, maybe this isn't for you, but it's worked out great for us. I'm not looking for an industry standard espresso machine. I'm looking for an espresso machine that's great for our lifestyle and our home. And this has been it. At the end of the day, is this espresso machine worth it? Yes. Is it perfect? No. But it's lasted a full year, making a ton of coffees, and it's still going strong. If you truly think you are in the market for an espresso machine and a Keurig or the cold brew trick doesn't work for your lifestyle, get it. But get it on sale. I made a recipe video using this machine on my TikTok that I'll link down below if you're interested in that. And I've also made a tutorial on how to make cold brew at home, and I will link that video down below if you're interested in learning how to do that as well. I hope you learned something in this video and figured out if this machine would be worth it for you or not. It was definitely worth it for me. Toodles.